Canada's performance in the recent Beijing Olympics included some high expectations in rowing. Having qualified for eight races, Canadians were favorites to medal in at least half. In the women's eight, Sarah Bonikowski knew the pressure was going to be great. For the last six months, she carried this boat into the water 12 times a week for practice. That had capped off over six years of effort. The last two years saw her make Canada's national team. Far from a lonely walk, she realized an entire country was cheering her on. This is from our Row Gold Gala, and everyone at the gala signed this banner for us, and they sent it home with us. We had it in the boathouse kind of for inspiration. And but all that support was quite different than where Sarah began in rowing. She was a 19-year-old university student, yeah. alone with a shattered dream. Sarah, this begins with a closed door for you. You had a dream crash. Tell us about that. Well, when I was on my way to the University of Victoria, when I was 19 years old, I was really had dreams of being a rock star, actually writing and recording my own music. And uh, I applied for their music program um, on piano. and. I, as a backup plan, had also applied for humanities, and I didn't get in for the music. So I was really distraught over that, but all through high school I'd given up any sports in my life um, for music, because I was in all the concert bands at school, so it always conflicted with any practices. So I decided, you know what, like I want to try a varsity sport. And I looked around and rowing was the only sport where you could start as a novice. They had a learn to row program, so I signed up for rowing and uh, that's how I got into sports. So rowing begins for you. How does the Olympic dream start to build? Uh, I was a very recreational rower for my first few years at university. The first cuts actually, uh, we had over 250 girls sign up and first cuts were just based on height to weight ratios um, and I was bottom of the pack for a long time. I was sort of the, the low benchmark if I beat anyone either on the water or on the indoor training machines that person often quit the team and this happened <laughs> three or four times actually and uh, but I really liked being part of the team and the camaraderie and I think I, I like kind of pushing myself in a different completely different area of my life and um, when I was in my fourth year of school um, about to graduate I had about a month to go my coach sat me down and said look like I think if you take this seriously and train for another year you could make the national team and I said I'm not interested in that I think that's a crazy lifestyle those girls are so narrowly focused and that's not really what I want for myself and um, but I really started to notice that I kept telling people, yeah, my coach thinks I should try at the national team, but I don't want to, you know, but he thinks I could do it. And I realized I was really proud of the idea that someone thought I was capable of that. And uh, so I, I actually went back and I said, okay, like, let's do it. I'll commit. Um, that summer uh, in 2006, um, I came out for tryouts and uh, I was selected to be part of the camp that um, eventually would go to the world championships. And so it begins. You are really Olympic bound. Tell us about the training that kicks in. Our training cycle builds. Um, it has an ebb and flow to it, but ultimately we're peaking towards the Olympics. So um, in the last probably even six months of training, we were on the water 12 times a week. And then we also had um, three days worth of weights that we would do on our own time and um, some people would choose to do Pilates and um, extra core work on top of that so it was a, a full-time job. What's the hardest thing about it? I'd say uh, there's two things that are really hard about training. Um, one of them is that you're the fittest you've ever been in your entire life but you feel awful every single day. Every day you wake up and your body is just aching and you think there's no way I can do this. I can't do another day. Like, if I'm so fit, why do I feel so terrible? I can't even walk up the stairs. So the physical elements are really, really hard. And I'd say for me, even harder than that is just needing to be on your A game all the time. Um, our tryout process for the Olympics lasted, I would go ahead and say a full year. 
So every day you need to be on your game and the fastest you can be on the water and just be so focused. And that was really hard for me because you, you want to break. Like today I just want to be average. Well, today might be the day that the coach is thinking, you know, maybe you just don't have what it takes. So. And what keeps you going in that? That's incredible. Well, obviously there's a few answers to that question. Um, the dream of going to the Olympics and competing on that team. Uh, but I'd have to say that my faith as well was a really big thing that kept me sane, I think, when, um, when things got really, really hard. And I, I truly believe that my story is, is pretty uncommon and that God definitely had a hand in placing me here and putting me on the team. And I just knew that this was where he wanted me to be. So no matter how hard it got, I knew that's what I was supposed to be doing. Okay, let's unpack that a little bit. Your faith kept you sane on the <laughs> Olympic race. Absolutely. Where, where does, where does uh, your, your relationship with God begin for you? Um, I grew up in a Christian family. Um, I would say I became a Christian very young. Um, all I really remember is a candle and a Bible, and it was backyard Bible club that we ran in our backyard. But um, I'd say when I was in my teens, I went to Camp Carith, and it's a Christian camp, and that's kind of where God kind of met me in a very real, very personal way, and um, I became a camp counselor there and um, stayed involved throughout um, my teenage years and early 20s uh, with that camp as well as with Youth for Christ. And um, definitely uh, university was a really searching time for me. Because you took philosophy. I you did. took the biggest questions that have been wrestled with for centuries upon centuries. Yeah. How did that challenge this childhood belief in God? It definitely did. I can't attribute that entirely to philosophy. Um, when I was in high school, it was actually the book of Romans that really challenged me the most with my Christian beliefs. Um, I think there's a, a lot of very hard questions in Romans um, surrounding if I want to do the right thing, why do I do the wrong thing all the time? Um, it, I felt that the book contradicted itself and I needed answers that I didn't feel people could give me. And uh, I know that people were concerned that I was taking philosophy because I think often when Christians think philosophy, the only name they know is Nietzsche and they just think, God is dead. <laughs> That's what philosophy says. but. Um, I really believe, like Socrates says, that the unexamined life um, isn't worth living. So <laughs> uh, I felt if faith was real, that I, w I would find it again. And philosophy actually led you back into a deeper discovery of God. It led me certainly into a, a deeper discovery of the way I needed to believe things. And I really believe that the only way you can understand God is subjectively through, through your own experience. And that has to be so personal. And you have to get your questions answered. You have to. And it's uh, definitely not on a, a rational, logical basis that God met me. But it was actually through rowing that I feel God really brought me back and all of a sudden was very present in my life. How? What happened in the rowing? Um, well, the year I made the national team, uh, the women's national team is based here in London, Ontario, and I'd been living in Victoria, BC for five years. And anyone who's been to either of those places will know Victoria is very gorgeous um, on an island in you know, the ocean. It's great. And uh, London's a very industrial city. It's always under construction, um, you know, in the heart of uh, Southwest Ontario, and uh, I really didn't want to be here. I f that first year, um, summer of tryouts was really hard. It was really hard to fit in, and I was the new kid on the block, and I found it really, really hard. And I started going to a church here called North Park that just really jived with me. And all of a sudden, God was meeting me, and God was here, and that's when I realized even if I'm in the ugliest place in the world, not that London is, but 
and God is there, that is better than being in the most beautiful place in the world without God in my life. And, and I really knew that at that point, like this is where I was supposed to be and the only success I'd had in rowing was directly related to, to God's will for my life.